Q&As every Tuesday. And we're just gonna be the norm. Just nod, just nod, <laughs> smile, <laughs> drink your wine. Um, we're trying something new today. Mm -hmm. We are Ooh, not right. only on Facebook, we're also streaming live on YouTube. YouTube, so yeah. I'm gonna check everything out while you talk for a second. Yeah, so um, <laughs> everybody, so there's a couple things that you need to know about us. So number one, we are giving you all this content so that you can craft and paint and DIY better and have excellent results. And today we've got some pretty special stuff. I'm gonna show you how to use a bunch of different applicators to apply your paint. Um, I think you're gonna be really surprised by a bunch of them, okay? So stick around to the end because mm -hmm. all 10 of them are fabulous. Um, YouTube is where we host our lives after we get done putting them live on Facebook, but now we're doing them live on both. Yeah. What that means for you is you can put comments right into YouTube yeah. and you can get the answers to your questions. You can share with other painters and other DIYers. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just maybe a little bit easier place to find the content after it's um, like Facebook, it kind of gets lost in the feed. So we wanted well, it easier to find. And people. it will also be now instantly on YouTube rather than waiting a couple days yeah. for us to get everything edited. So as soon as we're done, it's it'll yeah. Be if on you YouTube. missed something or you wanted to know, like, what did she say after that thing? Um, then you can go to, it'll be right there and easy yep. to find. And we already have Sue. Sue's joining us yes, on Sue. YouTube Hi, today. Um, so the exciting thing about it is now you can watch us Facebook, you can watch us YouTube. We're going to do giveaways for on both. both. So you can watch on both. You could like, share, and comment mm -hmm. and do the thing on both of them and win and double your chances. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of a fun thing. So, um, and if you win two prizes, I'm not going to argue. And I, might, she's the boss. So I she, might be the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so she gets, she make, gets to make that call. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're super excited to be trying something new yeah. and um, you know expanding our reach for you guys so that you can watch it in both places. Yeah, we literally had a three hour meeting yesterday about mm -hmm. um, all the, the things that we do in social media and online and videos. And we, our goal, like we made a goal and our goal was to give our fans um, the most content and the most creative content that we possibly can. So we've literally made it our goal to serve you. So um, we are here to, to do you? what you, yeah. so please tell us questions, um, ask things, um, tell us what you're doing, tell us um, what's in your Tumblr, Carrie mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers, um, happy we, Tuesday. We um, learned a thing this week, you ready to practice it? Okay, if you're on a Zoom call with your boss and you have something other than tea or coffee in your cup, you can go, and blow on it and they'll think that you have something yeah. warm in there. So just a little bit of silly. So just, just a little, you know, come to us for all of your um, work at home. Right, tips. we'll give you all the tips. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, oh, happy Tuesday. Yeah, so okay. um, some housekeeping. I don't like housekeeping. housekeeping. We need to, guys, okay, so the first thing that we would like you to do is to help us uh, find, find another, word, find for another housekeeping. word for housekeeping. So yes. when it comes to housekeeping, we're talking about things like on our YouTube channel, mm. our video that we released last week was Look our... Look at this yeah. foil on there. Oh my goodness, Carrie, you did such a great job Thank on that. Thank you. So this was our Hive Rules project with a, a rustic background. Mm -hmm with a foil so it's kind of country it's kind like of fancy country yeah 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 farm chic, chic. yeah yeah Yo, farm farm house chic. Like that. yeah yeah so this is on our These youtube channel we're mm -hmm. a big 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 topic on um when we went to market um in january so bees are all the buzz yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> dun, dun. i'll be here all day all day <laughs> all, all day <laughs> Um, and then we're going to show you what we're releasing this week oh, on you guys Saturday so morning is our bunny crossing. Look how cute these guys are. And this cute. lesson is amazing because we're going to show you how to do this rustic background. We're going to show you how to do drop shadow mm -hmm. and use the tea towels, which were the number one thing that we saw at market. Yeah. And when we were talking with Morgan about tea towels um, today, we were talking about how you can use tea towels with Americana, with country, with farmhouse farmhouse chic you can use them for fourth of july you can use them for any season mm -hmm. they look great on everything you can use it for paris stuff yeah like it it's for anything so this is the most brilliant tool right um that we have right now is that tea towel stripe in the multiple mm -hmm. different stripes 
everything has tea towel stripes on it. And this stencil is super cute. It actually I comes with bunnies. it comes with polka dots across the bottom. So they're like egg -shaped. yeah, they're yeah. egg shaped. They're super cute. So we take those away and do the tea towel, but it actually already comes with an embellishment stencil attached to it. And when we were originally talking about doing this mm -hmm. project, we decided to go tea towel theme because that's what's popular right now. But we, how cute would this be on a table runner? Oh my god! For your so Easter good. table, yeah. like oh and you my could gosh! Do, you could do this up the middle, and then the tea towel stripes mm -hmm. at the ends. Yeah, you can do. And you guys, we show the rock lawn in a couple of videos. Um, rock lawn table runner, mm -hmm. wherever that is on YouTube, that's where you'd find that. But you can cut those into placemat sizes. Absolutely. And when you do the placemat size. Um, you can cut it into any shape, just use some squaring tools so you get the shapes right. You can cut it into shapey shapes. Um, but what's neat about that is when you varnish it and do all of that, they are scrubbable, wipeable. Mm -hmm. And so you never need to go and get your themed things again from, you know, a big box store or anything like that. So you can make your own. Yeah. And I love that. I, I love I that I love too. that personalized, um, you know, I'm into like a a palette at my house that has like some mellow golden yellow mm -hmm. and a rusty orange and then a little bit of sage green. I can't always find that everywhere. So I can paint my own things and make it my own. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Love, love, love. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and do a giveaway. I'm going to do Ooh. two, go ahead and do two giveaways. So our first giveaway is going to be, Oh shoot for a Buffalo plaid stencil. And it is going to go to, um, I, can, I can grab it, okay. thank you. Um, it is going to go to, sorry, I'm stuck. It's gonna go to Hello Queen Ooh. on YouTube. And she asked, what stencil brushes do you recommend? Oh girl, we are going to yes. cover that and shortly. And what I would like to say, mm -hmm. and this is something that we're not good about doing, um, or reminding other people to do if they want to is share information with the people that are asking the questions. I don't have to be the only one that answers, mm -hmm. but we definitely have a preference. And I think most of you that join us know exactly what that preference is. Um, and the other brushes that exist in the world do not, they do not do the same thing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be talking about those. Those will be one of the things that we show out of the tent. Today. Yes. So if you, if you win one of our giveaways, we will send you a message. We will send you a comment. Have you email us, or we'll get in touch with you so you can um, get your prize. Get your prize. Yeah. All right. So I think we are ready. I've got my tea cup and my <laughs> tea cup. and your other alcohol. Your non-drinking <laughs> alcohol. Non-drinking alcohol. Shh. Okay. So ready to go. Our number one, very first way. Yeah. So it's not the number. Not one. the number it one. It's the first. One. The first way. Yeah. So we are covering. 10 ways to apply paint through stencils today. Yep. The first one is a makeup sponge. Okay, so what occurred to us is that we want to have um, people know um, if you have to use something other than our very favorite way to apply mm -hmm. the paint, how you can do that successfully. So um, there are a lot of ways to skin a, mm -hmm. a critter. I don't, I, I like cat, so <laughs> I don't want to skin the cat. <laughs> But um, anyway, there's a lot of ways to get around things. And then what I did find when I was playing around with the different ways to do this is if I applied, beyond, oh, I turned it upside down. I'm almost out of this. Um, we have this on the website though, and we have it over in the warehouse over there. The stick and restick is our product of choice for making your stencil sticky on the back. And I've pre-done this on, whoops, and notice that, I want, I want to really point this out. Number one, this doesn't have a lot of surface area, so it's not gonna be super sticky, but it's just sticky enough to tuck it down. It's not so sticky that it's gonna be like, oh my God, I can't peel this thing away. So it's the perfect amount of tack. I found that this, all of my techniques work way better if I had my stencil adhesed on the back. So I'm gonna use some wax paper and show you how to do that. Wax paper is just a nice, cheap, easy. I'm gonna flip that upside down because it wanted to curl on me earlier. Okay, and I am on my black um, silicone mat, and that is an affiliate link. Um, and on our website, we have a big list of affiliate things that we send you to Amazon for because we just can't carry everything. We are a small business, but we are here mm -hmm. for you, and we are all about stencils and DIY. Okay, I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna start this with, whoops, 
the tea towel stencil. Um, this is so interesting to me. This is the darling of the universe right now. This is what the tea towel stencil looks like. It has double stripes. It has um, two stripes with two skinnies. It has bigger ones. And it is just a universal, um, a universal awesome thing. We're using the punch system to store the stencils, in case you're wondering. Um, a lot of you would be joining us new. Um, but this is just the punch that you use, and it makes these little pin, they look like little push pins, okay? And it makes those in the punch when you just like clunk it down. And then you can put it on the disc ring binders, and there will be an affiliate link. Um, you can just pop it on there, and then it just peels right out. <clears throat> and what I love about this is, this is a lot of stencils and it gets heavier every week. There's easily yeah. 20 or 30 stencils there. And this is a little piece of seven mil mylar that is holding this whole thing up on these little rings. So it is super, super duper durable. And um, I love it for stencil organization. You can stack them up and they do a brilliant job. So the way that you're going to put your adhesive on is with a dauber. And I have labeled one of my daubers with tacky. And that's not because it's just tasteless. Um, it's because it is going to be a little bit squishy and the squish doesn't bounce back quite as fast. And it seems like it's the one you want to use. Um, you could also use the makeup applicators and to do that. So I'm going to put some of my stick and restick out here. And I've already got my one that I'm going to use today done, but I just want to show you this real quick. So I can load that on my dry applicator and then I can just tacky 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 and this is why you want to do this okay a couple of things I'm going to slow my roll with my talking because I'm going fast <clears throat> so one thing that you're going to notice is that I'm going to be bouncing this stencil up and down quite a bit so I want to anchor it and that way it doesn't jump around watch what happens it's already sticky on one side of it so watch what happens. This just grabs it and it just wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, so you know, Steve always, Steve um, <clears throat> is sitting behind monitors over there and he always just cracks up whenever I make sound effects. So I almost do it more because, ah, because he laughs. Okay, so we get that on there. And now that they're a little heavier with the medium, they're not really doing it. So this needs to dry. <laughs> when it dries, it'll be clear, okay? And then when I get done with this applicator, my preference for you when you're using an applicator that you don't want to throw away is to take it immediately to sink with water and do the water squishy squishy thing we have a video on how to clean your brushes and things um, but you just squish all that material out of it and then this will be good to use over and over and over again so in the meantime i can't run because we're on camera so i'm going to bury it into my water basin and anchor it with a brush so that it stays sunk down I'm going to take this away and let that dry. Then I'll get rid of my wax paper. And I'm going to put this in here. And we'll find it next week when we're ready to go. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! Okay. So I have a couple questions. Okay. We have lots of questions. Hey, um, good. Barb asked, with the B video, I used glitter. What's the difference between glitter and the Glamour Dust Ultra Fine Glitter Paint? Um, so the Glamour Dust Glitter Paint has glitter super fine glitter mixed in it and it is um it's just not as sparkly like you don't get the the um it's embedded in it embedded in a medium so mm -hmm. it's gonna lose some of its shine um, by being embedded in that so okay. i really do prefer having a glitter on top now what i would do is do we have um spray um, there's that yeah no this is the glamour dust right so if you use the Krylon matte spray mm -hmm. um, on top of your project, it'll anchor that glitter in so that you're not having like glitter everywhere. And that glitter is, there's a funny thing I could say, but it's not appropriate, so I'm yeah. not going to. <laughs> but <laughs> glitter goes everywhere. Yeah, so I do have a filter. I just like to point that out occasionally. Um, <laughs> so with the makeup sponge, uh -huh. do you wash it or cut off the paint part and reuse it? So um, makeup sponges, um, and you want, makeup sponges are not all built the same way. I think we get these from Walmart, um, and they're a nice, dense, 
you really want to watch um, the density of what you're using. Uh, make sure if it's super floppy feeling, you want to be like, mm, no. If you wash it out right away, then it won't dry. If you don't wash that right away, you can trim off the end and keep using it until you have nothing but a nub. Are those the ones from Boardroom? They are. Okay, so we actually get those from Amazon. Oh, and after, Amazon affiliate. After there we, we go. are done today, um, mm. I will make an Amazon affiliate link for that and share it with you guys. Um, we did a lot of research when we were yeah. finding sponges. I'm picky about my applicators in case you haven't mm -hmm. figured that out. Yeah. If it's a cruddy, ha, filtering, if it's a cruddy applicator, then um, it's just not going to do the job. Yeah. You know, and you, now today I'm going to ruin that statement yeah. by using things. You guys are not going to believe some of the things we're going to show you how yeah. to apply paint with um, today. Um, but, so it's going to be like a foam brush. You don't want it too soft. Yeah. It's going to be like, the floppy it's going to be like brush. Goldilocks. You don't yeah. want it to be too soft. Just you don't right. want to be too hard. You yeah. want it to be just right. So do you wash the makeup sponge or cut off? So I, if I had my choice, so um, I lived in Portland, Oregon for 14 years and I'm a master recycler. Okay. That being said, that means that I don't like to throw the thing away. So um, I would always rinse it out if I can and I would just squish it under cold running water. If you can't get there, then you cut it off and you, you, but if I'm painting with something super sticky or if I'm painting with something that's offensive in some way, glitter, things like that, and I just want to chuck that thing, I'm probably not going to cry, yeah. you know? So, um, I, it just depends on you and what your situation, if you're mm -hmm. painting in your second story, third story, some people I was reading about somebody organizing their craft room on the third floor of their house. I don't know if that woman had a sink up there, you know? So if you have to run all the way downstairs to go wash something right away, I'd be like, float that thing in a bucket of water. Right. Get it at the end, you know, or chuck it in the can. So, um, Anita I'm asked, losing my master recycler card. <laughs> <laughs> Anita asked, what's your opinion of stenciling with chalk paint versus acrylic paint? Um, there's no difference. Um, all of the acrylic paints, um, I'm going to say this. I don't know that chalk paint is an acrylic paint. I think it is. I think, I think they mix things mm -hmm. in it to make it a chalky kind of thing. Um, but everything except oil paint. And you can actually stencil with oil paints. But um, I've never done it, and I don't own oil paints. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably not going to be the one to teach you how to do that. <clears throat> they used to do it in the 70s. They called it theorem painting. And, um, you know, but yes, you can... Totally everything about painting with any applicator is the load and the offload. So, and, and the moisture on the thing. So if I have this soaking in water and I take it out and I don't control the water, I'm going to have a mushy mess. Okay, so if I start with something dry, I load whatever medium. I'm going to use chalk paint, acrylic paint, um, enamel paint, any of the paints. Um, and then I blot it off and then I apply it, I'm going to be way more controlled than if I scoop and go. No scooping and going. No scooping and going. Um, also, we want to give a, a very lovely shout out to our old friend Randy, who is laughing. Randy! He's laughing about you having a filter. <gasps> Randy, <laughs> you know I have a filter, buddy. <laughs> okay, so we're doing makeup sponge. Okay. Are, are we good? Did we do makeup sponge? Did we paint with a makeup sponge? No, we just <laughs> talked about them because somebody asked the question. Okay. Okay, Make so sponge. is that the first one? That's the okay. first one. Okay, so I'm painting on paper today. Okay, so we just want to show just basics about this. So I have my beehive stencil. I chose this because when you are going to do some of these techniques through a stencil, and if you choose one where most of the material is removed, i.e. there's only little bits of connecty things everywhere, it's the most difficult. So I wanted to show the hardest thing you would ever paint with by doing this. Okay, so I'm going to go here, just lay it down. What I love about this medium, that's the stick and restick, and you can get this, I think it's on our website. It now. is on our website. Someone asked if the stick and restick was similar to the tack and retack. The, um, did you do no, we did the foiling glue. Right, the foiling glue. I think you said that you the, had used that in the yeah, past. Yeah, it's, um, I can't think, it's not tack and retack, it's some tack, other, and, tack and tack, tack and tack tack it over and over. Tack it over and yes, yes, tack it over and over. Yeah, tack it over and over. No, what's interesting to me, um, so boy, you guys, good questions. I love these questions. So helpful hint for you guys um, is I used to use the tack it over and over, and it's been years, um, probably five years or more. And I would put my stencils together, and they were so sticky that a tack was, it was 
an aggressive mm -hmm. tack, you know, and so it was just really like heavy duty and stuff like that. So let me show you, this would not have been possible um, in this book. I call these stencil books. Mm -hmm. um, so we go here to anything with stripes, you want to use something tacky on the back. And we've done this one and it's still sticky, but I've got it in this book and you can see that page turn just as easy yeah. as the rest of the pages. It does not harm the other stencils. So Patty's also a mind reader. We had several questions about that, about if you needed to put something between it. Yeah, and I used to with the tack it over and over. Mm -hmm. I had to put like a wax paper or whatever sheet. And then I have discovered that I'm not promoting Rexall. However, um, the rubbing alcohol takes this material mm -hmm. off of your stencil if you use a dry paper towel. Um, you could use whatever you know you want. You want to be careful when you're trying to take something off of your stencil to lay it flat and then work in little areas. You don't want to go like because if you do that, it's going to lift and tear your stencil. Mm -hmm. Torn, bent stencils are destroyed stencils, so we don't want those. Yeah. But anyway, this takes this off and it also takes off the um, yellow, this guy. This is the other way that we like to use. This is great for throwing in your paint bag mm -hmm. and not having to put out a pile of medium and have a different applicator. This just goes rip, rip, rip. However, it wouldn't work very well on the beehive because it's too skinny. So yep. I think my favorite is this, because this I'm going to throw away um, at the end of its cycle. But oh, I'm going to throw a bottle away too. Oh, you guys, I'm well, so torn. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, that's my world. Welcome to, once you get this education, it's in your head and you can't yeah. lose it. Okay, so we've got this stuck down. We're going to use the makeup applicator. Okay, so these are just... You know, the things you mm -hmm. do the thing with. And I'm gonna take a paint color. I'm using a dark, just so that you can easily see the contrast. Okay, and I'm gonna use the same thing. Okay, here's the hints, right? Applicator, dry. Just a little bit of paint on there, but I'm going to wipe it off. And then I'm going to go ahead and blot, blot, blot. And then I'll come over here. Now the blotting will make it not cover as quickly, but it dries so fast. So now I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to apply with the makeup applicator. I'm gonna pick more up, blah, 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 blah. And then we'll take a peek. Okay, so this is very similar to using other applicators like our stencil brush. You can do a nice thin coat and then you, you don't have like a big mess. Um, I'm going to show you this and I'm going to do it wrong. Okay, so there's that. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah. You can do it well. a couple of times mm -hmm. to get full coverage. Okay, so I'll drop that back down. Now I'm going to do it wrong and I'll show you the difference. Okay, so I'm going to pick this up and I'm not, I'm not overly scooping, but I'm just doing what I've seen done. Um, and I'm going to go here. <laughs> no, <laughs> Steve is groaning. <laughs> oh, 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 that's awful. Okay, so we just did it really heavy and you can see what happens and when you are very aggressive with your paint load and you don't blot off in mm -hmm. your paper towel i literally wasn't doing anything to try to shove it under there i was going up and down right. you can replay this because we're on youtube and you'll yeah. be able to find it um but anyway that's how you don't struggle and then if i go into my water i'm squishing the applicator in the water just trying to get this like, okay, I think that's good enough. Okay, so just squishing it in my water, there's your clean little applicator. You just set that aside, you let that dry, and then tomorrow you can use this again. Um, these might take a little longer, they're very dense, so if you get it really saturated, it might take a little longer, so make sure that you're dry. If I use a wet applicator and I apply paint, it's even worse than applying too much paint, so the, the water will make things seep. And then Peg had asked. Hey Peg. Um, so Peg had asked about using plain water. So you answered that, but she asked, and this is going to kind of go over a few of these things. Um, is it okay to use a mild soap to wash out sponges? Never. Uh, eh, eh, eh. No. Yeah, you don't ever want to use any soap with it. It doesn't matter if it stains. Um, so I've got this thing of applicators. And guys, these are imports. Mm -hmm. I just want to say this. These are imports, and that means that, you know, <laughs> what imports are doing these days? 
and I don't know if that will ever end, but um, when this gets stained around the edges and you get a little hard crusting and stuff like that, they're still good. So you do not have to worry about staining and that kind of stuff. Our brushes stain as well, our dome brushes, that's got a stain on it, but it's still completely flexible and workable. So yeah. paint stains, that's its job. You know? So we had a question, you might want, you want to see what your thought ah! is now, because you might want to say, you know what, I'm gonna talk about this later. The question was, do you recommend recommend using a makeup applicator rather than a stencil brush? I'm going to say anytime. Yeah. We're always going to recommend using a stencil brush first. Yeah, so there's things that you can do with, okay. The reason I'm doing this video is because, um, you know, we're hardcore like, oh my God, we sell stencil mm -hmm. brushes. And it's not really why we're doing that. The stencil brushes are what we use because if I thought a makeup applicator was better, I'd use a makeup yes. applicator. I don't need to sell brushes to be in business. You know, it's just, I'm doing it because they work. Mm -hmm. um, but the stencil brush, you can do so many things with. Right. And it's flexible and it's durable and it doesn't lift and it doesn't suck up the, the stencil when it lifts because a sponge will definitely catch it and make it pop up. So you have control. And yeah. control is, painting is control. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing a, um, if you're cutting in on a, you know, your trim on your wall or something like that, if you don't have that steady hand and that brush that's cut correctly mm -hmm. and the right amount of paint, if you use a really thick paint, it won't do the job. So you need like some control pieces. And that's why we're here every week. Yeah. We want to show you how to control your environment and then you'll be able to have a beautiful painted thing. Yeah. So that's my very long answer. Okay, okay, what's next? Number one was makeup. Number two, the second one we are going to cover is a kitchen sponge. Kitchen sponges? Like I really tried to do all the things. Like if you want to be a crafter and you have some stencils, mm -hmm. you have no excuses not to grab the things you have around you and make the things. Like do the thing, make the things, be a crafter. It's like all about just being creative. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a makeup sponge. You can go a couple ways with the makeup sponge. This is brand new out of the package, so it has a little bit of moisture in it, which mm -hmm. is interesting. It is not ringable, mm -hmm. it's just damp. Okay, damp is okay. Um, damp is not okay with a stencil brush because they're so, um, I think they attract water into each of the hairs, they're natural bristles. So I think that each individual hair grabs water and I think that that releases and I, you don't wanna damp one of these, don't do that. But this can be a little damp, and then you could use it big, like the square, or you could cut it into a smaller applicator. These are also washable, so you don't have to worry about, whoops, you don't have to worry about um, um, the staining or any of that kind of stuff. You can just squish them out mm -hmm. and be done. Okay, so we're going to get a fresh sheet of paper. So Kelly commented, and Kelly said, I totally agree, stencil brush first but she said, I also like the ink sweeper, the dome brush, and the mm -hmm. sponges. Yeah. Sponges. Doing a bunny painting this weekend without a stencil, I used all of the different applicators. Yeah. So it's nice just to have some different options. Yeah, I mean, it's like, so number one, okay, I, I can't tell you how many people, like we all know what times we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. Like it's just all the times, right? And so if I don't own probably 20, of these brushes and I want to paint something let me take this guy right mm -hmm. here okay so if I have I have white background so that's not this brush but if I'm gonna do blue and I'm gonna do pink and I'm gonna do gray and I'm gonna do yellow I have to have at least five brushes yeah if I have to have five brushes I've spent $25 mm -hmm. you know if it's the bigger one um, now they last and last and last and they're super durable so I'm not knocking I'm not knocking my favorite brush like that will yeah. not happen. But sometimes you can't have $25 of brushes. You might need to have like $25 worth of something else, mm -hmm. you know? So um, it's just do you, but you might have a makeup applicator and you might have mm -hmm. a kitchen sponge and you might have some other things I'm going to show you. You guys are going to want to really, <laughs> you're going to want to see this. Stick with us. Yeah. There's really, some, I got some weird too. coming, um, but they, they work. So like, I just want this to be accessible for everybody. So mm -hmm. take our kitchen sponge. We're going to pick up our paint and notice the same thing. I'm going to dip into my paint and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to offload and I'm going to come onto my paper towel. Nothing changes with every application. You're always going to dip 
unload, wipe off. Every one of these applicators is the same. And I'm gonna go a little bit more because I feel like that has a little bit more crevice. Now, I can do this with my kitchen sponge. And Rest, maybe you can get a picture of that texture. It's got a little bit of texture to it, which is kind of a neat thing. And then I blot it off again, reload, blot off. Notice that I'm not having that lifting with the sponge effect because of the tacket over and over. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. And then what I thought was really interesting, I didn't think this would work. Um, I'm gonna use this very dried out sponge. I can actually get a swirl um, effect and it's actually pretty even. So I'm kind of impressed by this. Now yeah. let's take a look at it and peel it away. Okay, and I love that this tacky stuff doesn't stick to the paper. So now what I will say is different with this than the stencil brush is there's a blurrier line. Um, it has, it's kind of got a cool effect. If I was trying to do an effect like this, I might do something really dreamy with it. Tone on tone colors and just make a really cool background. Yeah. So, but you can have some texture, but pick up your kitchen sponge, go be creative, you know? Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna That's soak that in water. Okay. And, and really, you can use any sponge. We yeah. have lots of sponges that we use. Yeah, if you, um, I'm gonna get behind here. Behind the spring one, yes. So this is our. Um, this was in our live. This today. is our makeshift <laughs> tripod. Tripod, because we're that company, right? <clears throat> Steve. <laughs> so you could use a sea sponge. You could dip it in there, mm -hmm. you dry it off on here, and do the same yeah. thing. Um, you know, so you could totally do that. The difference in this, honestly, this is this is becoming quickly the stick and restick video, and I did Part not two. actually <laughs> did not intend that to be a thing. But um, these techniques are only working because I stuck the background. Absolutely. If you use this without sticking something down, you are going to. We were talking about one of our techniques today, um, and if you use, and I'll tell you about it when we get to it. But if you use this without something sticking down, it lifts like really lifts the stencils. So um, this, this is like kind of key to making all of these different things work. And a bottle of this, we've probably done lot, I, like a lot, um, 20, 30, 40 projects. Yeah. I mean, like, and we don't just do like a project. We do the prep for a project. We do mm -hmm. the um, show you how to do it with the project. We show you, like we use it three the or four times. The research for the project. Yeah. And so it... It definitely, and this literally is not what I intended to talk about this video. It just happens in my research that has been what has been revealed. Okay. Okay. Number three that we're going to talk about is a dauber. Okay. The dauber, the famous dauber. And did I lose my famous dauber? Thankfully, we have the back wall. Thank you all. Okay. Um, so here we go. We have, this is a foam dauber. These are amazing tools. Um, what I love about these, so versus these little guys, when you, I'm going to do a thing on my hand, Rusty, okay? So when you push on this, it has a wiggle power, okay? Like it, and I'm trying to make it wiggle, but it really kind of woo goo 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 okay? So when I do this one, it has very little wiggle power. It's very, very solid, very awesome. And um, that is what I love about these. These are cheap and easy. This is $3.99, um, I will look it up and see. $1.99, something like that. Um, it $3.27. $3.27, because that 27 <laughs> cents, okay. right? Um, you never know. But they are literally, some of these I have had for, 10 years mm -hmm. um you know this looks like a 10 year old one <laughs> it's got some <laughs> got some tread on it you know yeah but no you, these you use them over and over as long as you keep them clean they'll last forever mm -hmm. um if you're abusive and say you're doing something over a texture paste and you're doing something like that to it you're going to tear up the foam yeah okay so that's not going to work but if you're nice to them they'll be nice back Okay, so we're gonna use this. We're gonna use this dry. Almost every single one of these things has to be dry. Yes. And if it's not dry, then you need to like stomp the wet out of it. Like you need to foot pounds of pressure kind of thing, okay? So we'll pick this up. We offload. Notice all the loading techniques, all the unloading techniques, and all of the wiping off techniques are the same. Um, I'm just gonna go over here. 
and just wipe that off a little bit. And I didn't wipe it this way. I didn't swirl it. I just patted. Okay, and now we'll go over here. Now this has got a really even texture. Okay, so now we'll see if we can swirl with it. I don't, I'm kind of thinking this, I did not try this earlier. I don't know that this is gonna work. Make sure I'm pushed down. So while you're doing that, I'm going to announce another winner Winners. real quick. This is going, um, Debbie was reading her mind right when you started talking about do you wet or dry the dauber. She asked, do you wet or dry the dauber? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So good, good job, Debbie, at reading her mind. You won our really cool diamond stencil. So I will message you and get your address and we'll get that sent out Can to I you. Can I see that diamond Absolutely. stencil? Absolutely. Guys, so our still, we have 6,000 plus titles of stencils. And a lot of these stencils were made because I am an artist, a painter, I'm a professional DIYer, whatever you want to call me. I've been doing this for 30 years. Anything with the pointy edge is going to be the most horrible, I had many words, the most horrible thing to ever try to base coat yourself, um, try to use a brush to do, try to line and make it right. You'd have to measure this stuff. You'd have to trace this stuff. You'd have to be a mathematician to get the angles right. You'd have to do all the things. So what we did is we used all of our smart computer programs and our wonderful designers, and we designed stencils for you that are tools. And we tend to keep our pattern stencils. Pattern stencils are the tools of our stuff. So there's checks, there's stars. We have some leaves. If you've ever painted a pointy leaf, you are going to be like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about, bats, um, all the things. So we keep them on a little ring just for ease of just like flipping. So this is just like a scrapbooking ring mm -hmm. and they come pre-drilled um, from our manufacturing with the little hole in it. So you can just put it in a little ring binder. Um, if you ever wanted to do like a sweater pattern and you, um, <laughs> you tried to do that by hand, Sad things would happen. Okay, let's take a peek and see what we got with the dauber. I'm gonna sink the dauber into water and make sure, like if I was doing it at home, I would go wash that out right away. Okay, so we're gonna go here and ta-da. Um, I'm kind of a little bit sad I threw the other papers in the trash because this is really beautiful um, technique. Oh, Carrie, you are so great. Okay, trash look at the Carrie. difference. <laughs> between the kitchen sponge and this sponge. So this is real. I almost might do this again on purpose. This is mm -hmm. really <laughs> yeah. pretty. Like it almost self shaded, it stayed in the lines. This kind of got really blurry, which is also a cool technique. But man, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna put this I love aside. When we, when we learn things with we you We learn guys. things, like literally this is the first I've seen of this and I, I didn't even think it would do it. So there you go. My own hippie noodle is blown. Okay, so now what are we going to do next? Next is a bump, bump, bump. The same thing we do every day, Brian. Paper <laughs> towel. <laughs> ah, you guys, paper towel. Can you use a, what did you say, what? Steve says, what? 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 Okay, so this is just the bounty paper towel that we use for our everyday painting and all the things. I'm going to fold it so it's a little bit more manageable. Okay. Um, nothing to see here, nothing to see. Okay, so I'm gonna put it, okay, so I'm an army brat, um, was in the Air Force, I know how to shine a shoe. Um, when you shoe shine, you put your fingers in there and then you cup the, um, the material around your fingers so that it makes like a nice base for buffing, okay? So I'm gonna make a nice base for buffing by doing, I'm gonna get that tail tucked in right there, and I'm gonna apply the paint Basically, I've become my own jumbo, jumbo dauber made out of paper right here. I'm going to pick up right where my fingers are. Okay, so I've got that. I'm going to wipe it off. Okay, that's what I've got. And then I'm still going to offload it on a paper towel. And I'm going to watch for any of these like long stringy things that came out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to daub. Now you're going to get a texture with this because it has a texture. I'm going to pick up paint from where I wiped off. I'm still gonna go blot. Okay, and so get that nice and even. And then I'm going to try swirling. I did not do this earlier as well. No. And I'm also going to share a video. Lena did a tutorial 
with um, a mermaid tutorial. Mm, and with the ombre, she right? did ombre, and she shows three ways to stencil an ombre, ombre background, and the paper towel was one of them. Yeah, cool. Hey guys, and don't forget, while we're here, um, you're on YouTube, you're on Facebook, Remember that on Tuesday we're on Facebook and remember that on Tuesday now we're going to be on YouTube. So whichever you're more comfortable with, mm -hmm. but make sure that you do like and share <clears throat> because yeah. if, if you find out when we're live, then we're going to have the prizes. You're going to have all that mm -hmm. information, all that wonderfulness um, that you are excited about. So make sure you do that um, and then ring that bell so yeah, it'll subscribe. notify you. Yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, yeah. I did have someone comment and say that they were notified on YouTube before they were notified on oh, Facebook. Oh, interesting. That we were live. Um, but if you, even if you are more comfortable on Facebook, you're still gonna wanna subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can know when we're adding videos yeah. and when we're these, live. These videos that she showed earlier with the beehive and the bunnies and all of that, those are only put on to YouTube mm -hmm. um, because um, Facebook doesn't like you to like lead people away right. or whatever. So we put them on YouTube, that's where you can find it. Yeah, this we'll like, share them, yeah. but it's a few days later and yeah. it's also a link that's gonna take you to YouTube anyway. Yeah. So. So you definitely want to subscribe. That's the point. Okay. Now I have to reload because I definitely have talked my brush dry. This is my brush right now, right? And Patty asked, Patty, Patty asked. Patty asked, Patty. Patty asked, Patty, doesn't the paper towel leave tiny fibers that affect the painting over it? It is not leaving any fibers. Now I am going to swirl right now. And so I'm going to... But it is, it is a little texture depending on yeah. what kind of paper towel you're using. Yeah, and you know, I think like a Viva would work mm -hmm. better One than One of the this. blue paper towels. The blue, the Scott, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, I did just get a brush of a fiber because I'm being rough against a little mm -hmm. edge of the thing. So I'm gonna put this down and then we're gonna reveal. Are you ready? Okay, so much blurrier. Very interesting. Now I do have a couple of fibers. Mm -hmm. Just gonna wipe that away and let's take a look and compare them. Okay, so we have this is the paper towel so we have texture and we have a very blurry but once again if you are a mixed media kind of person and you wanted this kind of dreamy like background effect this is brilliant you know and then this is less of a dreamy look and then this is the dauber and that mm -hmm. this is my new best friend yeah. right here this can is you like do I'm me a favor it. and write that on there while we're remind yeah we're yeah, yeah yeah and while we're doing that i can okay, ask we are um, paper towel question okay. um carol asked yeah. Oh, nope. Yep. Maybe. Yes. Carol asked. This is, which one was this? Uh, la, 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 la. Oh, sponge. sponge. Kitchen sponge. Um, well, maybe. Maybe I misunderstood that. Um, maybe stencil. So I guess I will ask the question. Okay. Can you use the ink sweeper similar yep. to using the jumbo dauber interchangeably? Yeah. They're, they're the same. Yes. They're okay. the same thing. Absolutely. Okay. Let's get a new one. What's next? Next we got a list. is the, what number are we on? We're on number five. We're halfway, halfway there. there. Okay, stick with us, guys. We got things to show you. Number five is the roller. Ooh, the roller. Okay, we're high rolling. Okay, so we're gonna put our. So I'm gonna tell you the negatives of the roller right now. Um, so we have. Doo -doo -doo. Um, a roller will not do controlled small areas. Okay, so the way that you can get around that is you can take you a piece of paper and you can mask, say I only want this much, I can mask that and then I can roll and then it won't go over where I don't want it. However, masking can be tricky and I think even our multi-masker will not work for doing the roller unless you're just in one little like corner or something, it would be difficult to do in a large area, but this is fast, 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 fast. So what we're gonna do is we'll show you how to load that and how to unload it. So what I like to do when I use a roller is I like to put out a line of paint, okay, similar to like a tray that you'd use for painting. And then you work it into your roller and I'm pushing kind of firmly. I wanna get it kind of preloaded, primed, if you will. Um, so I'm pushing in there and then I'm absolutely gonna go over and I'm gonna, so I'm kind of unloading with this step by the pushing step. And then I'm going to do the wiping off step. And the, look at, it seems like rollers gather way more right at the ends than anything else. So make sure you pay attention to that and roll that off. Okay, and then you, watch how fast, I'm gonna do the whole thing really quick. Okay, so you just go so fast. If I had an applicator, 
it would be ridiculous. Now I'd have to do more than one coat, but um, like it's fast and easy. So you can use a smaller applicator um, if you want to, so that you have a little bit more control. Control is, control in painting is the whole game, okay? Okay, so I've got that and let's take a look and see how we did. Ta-da! How awesome, that was so quick. That was so, what was it, like 30 seconds? Yeah, it Maybe was, and like I, I like that kind of like shaded effect on yeah, it. Yeah, well, really so cool. what's happening with that is I didn't get it evenly mixed right. into my roller, so it's leaving a white spot, and yes, it's a very good organic. So mm -hmm. that's when no control makes a big difference. When you have spatters that like spring off of your brush, or you, you get a roller that's not loaded completely, and you get this really kind of mystical look. Now, what I do with my rollers always, I really don't like cleaning rollers. I don't like, I don't like the amount of paint it wastes, but I'm gonna take the head of my roller off, and I'm going to put it in a full top baggie and just lock that down and it'll be ready for me to go to the sink. Um, I tend not to put them into the water because they float. So that's, um, and I'll write roller on here. Okay, what's next? Um, well, we have a couple questions right. about the rollers. Um, someone asked if it's a sponge or a plush and someone asked if it's a foam roller or a regular fuzzy paint roller like that you would typically yeah, use it, paint. Yeah, I wouldn't I would not use a fuzzy paint roller because I feel like the the fuzziness of it would sink under. Um, this is just a foam um, brush. It's just um, a, it's like the foam of the dauber. Yes. So um, and this one is a little bit softer. The one that I used um, is a little bit more springy and dense this one like squishes a little bit more mm -hmm. i would have more control with the one that's denser if you're hearing a trend in this um the all of the all of the brushes that are foam number one don't use soap to clean them but um they all are super dense so your makeup applicator needs to be super dense your um Daubers need to be super dense. Your rollers need to be super dense. So that's the key. That's the, yeah. the link that we're right. looking for is density when you're doing that. All righty. Number six, spray paint. Oh, okay. So I'm actually not going to spray paint. Do we have this one on the list as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. Good. All right. I am going to show the thing and then I'm going to talk about the thing, but I'm not going to do it in here because I need circulation. If you're going to use spray paints, you have to do it outside. And I'm not prepared to go outside right now. It's cold, you guys. Ohio is cold. Okay, one of the number one things that I think would be the best use for spray paints is this like snow that you can use with your kids and your grandkids. You can take stencils and you can mask around them and you can spray this on your window through a stencil. Make sure you use the tacket on the back so it sticks to the window and you can make that temporary wonderful little scene with the kids and it's amazing and so when we're doing something like that you know you'd take your book of stencils you'd go find snowflakes and you could put this all over the edges of your window just follow the directions on the can as long as you're tacky on the back you won't this is the one i was talking about if i spray paint over a stencil that isn't tacky it like lifts the stencil yeah. up and then it makes it into just like a mess underneath and it'll drip and do all the things. So tacky on the back and then follow the directions and do light coats, just like we do with stenciling, use light coats. Yeah. Okay. Yep. yep. All right, number seven is the- Number seven. Spray bottle. Ooh, you guys are gonna like this. Okay. So we'll put our little book of stencils away and we have a paper. And our tacky little stencil. It's not a tacky stencil, it's just tacky on the back. <laughs> okay, so this is a little spray bottle that we have and I've got an empty one. I wanna show you how to load this because I think this is really important. They sell at your craft stores, they sell this pre-mixed into little tiny bottles of things and they're, you know, $3.99, $5.99, whatever they are and you can make your own. So I just want to show that. So you can take your bottle and you're going to fill it with water. And I am going to use dirty water. I feel like I'm 
I'm not going to say that either. I've got a filter, Randy. I, I have filtered 20 times today. Ha! Huh. I feel very good about myself oh, suddenly. Yes. You're doing such a great job. You don't know what I was going to say. You should be very proud of me. Okay. So we're going to go in here. We're going to take our little water. And the more water you have, the more paint you have to use. So I'm going to use just like an inch. And we sell these on our website and just some paint. I'd say that's maybe a teaspoon or so of paint. You take your bottle and then you shake and do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. <laughs> okay, so um, just get it nice and shook up. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I will say, this bottle, I went and grabbed this bottle off the shelf. It had blue paint water in it. And I would recommend, if you were going to do this, to dump out your bottle. That's why you want to use just a little bit. Um, dump it out, fill it with clear water, and then spritz it through the nozzle. This had very irregular um, spray pattern when I tried it because I think there's some dry junk mm -hmm. in the nozzle. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep the nozzle clean, and then you want to keep a lid on. Paint oxidizes, so air meets paint, and paint and air harden. Okay, so that's oxidization. So when you leave this off, that allows the air to oxidize in that nozzle. So you don't want to do that. You want to keep that on and you want it to be cleaned out. So never allow your paint to sit. Um, that's just a recipe for disaster. Okay, I think that still looked like it had some things separating. Always spray over on your palette, okay? Just to get it started and primed. And now I'm gonna go on my elevation. I'm gonna be a helicopter. All right, if you have a Prada bag, if you have a Gucci bag, if you have a coach bag, if you have glasses you love, if you have a cell phone that you like, you want to not do this where you have things around you that are gonna get dirty. So what you would do is you would lay out some paper or some wax paper or something like that around you, move your stuff because spraying, spattering, we didn't think about spattering, spattering could work the same way. Mm -hmm. but. You want to get all your stuff away so that you don't get a mess everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to go for it because I've got my craft mat. The craft mat is scrubbable. Yeah. We, you can throw these in the, in the washing machine. Yes. Did you know that? I, I've done it. You can do the dishwasher too. Yeah. I've actually done the washing machine. It was like, that's weird. You know, big silicone mat in my washing machine. So I'm excited to get your answer on this. Okay. Darlia says, people always say distilled water doesn't really matter. <laughs> Now, distilled water, um, like we, we have a big debate about dis mm -hmm. dis distilled water in my house because it's so dry right yeah. now. Um, you got viruses going around everywhere and all that kind of stuff. So um, moist air is better for you than dry air. But distilled water keeps your machines clean. Yes. Okay. So like we actually have a home water distiller, but um, we run it out of water a lot. And Ted is mm, cranky with me sometimes. But um, I keep insisting it's got to be distilled. So if I thought it should be distilled, I would tell you, but you're going to just rinse this out. And so you're not going to have anything clogging up the stuff. So it's okay to have it just regular water. I just got it out of my water basin there. Okay. We're going to just spray from our helicopter and I'm going to get it primed one more time. This is the coolest thing you guys. Now it's probably going to make my paper buckle because it's so wet. Okay, you ready? La, la, la. Now, it's important if you're going to be messing with all of these dots that you lift straight up. If you slide it in my water, the paper's buckling. If you slide it in any way, then you're going to smear all the wet yeah. dots. So I'm going to grab the two corners and lift that off. Is that not the coolest Super thing? Super cool, love that. Oh, you guys. And you could do it with shimmery, you could do it with mm -hmm. things with metallic, you can do it with pearlescence, you could do it with all the things. It's so amazing. Very, very cool. Yeah, love it. Okay, I'm going to move this because it's dangerous. And I'm going to take this stencil and put it over another piece of paper and I'm going to wipe off all the wet. So see how I'm supporting my, my stencil and making sure that it's not going to get caught. Mm -hmm. um, if you catch it and it bends, then your stencil's kind of trash and then you're sad. And then that makes a really cool technique too, look. That is cool. Yeah. Huh. Learning all kinds of new I things know, today. I know, right? Neat, neat, neat. Okay. 
wipe up my edges. We also talked, when I did the um, Christmas cards, we talked about doing the spray bottle as the background on one of the Christmas mm -hmm. cards to kind of give it a spatter. I didn't oh, yeah, end up doing it, it like in the video, Christmassy. but it's definitely something that you could do. Yeah, I love that. All okay. right, what's next? Number eight Ooh. is the palette knife. All right, guys, this is weirdness. Make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you are on our with the notifications because you are going to love some of the things we have big planning meetings and we plan weird stuff we want to be like what is what are people asking about what are they talking we get the questions so we know what you guys want to know mm -hmm. we've got so much planned it's just cool stuff i I'm, I'm excited about what we've got going on okay so we are going to palette knife so in order to palette knife we have to do something to the mix and that is we're going to add so some medium to it this is going to be a texture medium you can use a crackle paste you could use a, this um, is a modeling paste you can use a whole bunch of different things um i want to talk about the condition of my palette knife for a hot <laughs> second here okay this palette knife knife has um like seen some days um it has hardened paint on it and probably a good soak in some rubbing alcohol would take that away so you could get that off if you um, have that it's going to leave a texture on the back of it and that's going to make this technique not work very well because it's going to lift the palette knife up and over and you're not going to get a smooth application so this is a crappy palette knife and it's going to do not a perfect job but i think it's important to talk about that and to show it so um, we're gonna put out some medium, okay? And then we're gonna mix it with paint. So you can do this. What I love about this technique is you can mix it with any color and it makes texture. And if you have texture, that means that you can distress an antique and it will lift the paint and it will settle in nooks and crannies. Whenever you can create a nook or a cranny or a texture or anything like that, then you leave an opportunity for I don't know, just grime. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, you guys will love it. We'll, we will do more with texture. We've done a bunch with yes. like the coffee, mm -hmm. the um, coffee project with the sawdust. The bell and, had yeah, texture. The be so with yeah. the bell, we did drop shadow on the letters and mm -hmm. then did a texture letter over top of it. It was really cool. You guys, would you do me a favor? If you are loving this content, would you make sure in either platform that you're on, if you're on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, if you would, you know, give us a heart, give us a thumbs up, give us some love because um, we want to know that you're there. We want to know that you care. We want to know all that stuff. And if you're finding it valuable, give us a comment, um, mm -hmm. share it with your fellow painters. All right. So I'm going to mix that up together. The thinner it gets, the, um, the more runny and the more likely to seep under. So we do want it to be thick. And then the thicker it is, the less paint there is. So the more transparent the paint is, not transparent, but mixed with white, it will make it um, not so strong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we get that nice and mixed. And then I'm going to, I always take my palette knife and I tuck it inside and then wipe it out that way. So that's how I do that. And then we're gonna go on to our stencil. And press it down. This is going to be one of those you're going to want to pay attention to this. Then we're going to pick up the medium and it's it's evenly gunky. Okay, and we could test it over here. How's that going to come off? Okay, that seems pretty even, so that's a good amount. You don't want to wonk and do like gooey dripping awful. You just want a little bit. I'm going to get some control and go back to the home stage pick up a little bit, and now I can wipe that over the top and that's not catching at all. So a little bit heavier. Okay, just keep picking it up, putting it down. So quiet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what the heck? She stopped talking. Okay, so we're going to go here and we're going to pick that straight up because it's wet. And you can see I probably didn't have that dry enough. Mm -hmm. So let me do it one more time and see if that really, really makes a difference. I'm going to dry this off. Let's see. We'll open up a paper towel. Mm, 
flip it over and then wipe that away. Okay. And then throw that away. And then we're gonna go here and do it one more time. We're gonna mix in a little bit more paste. Carol said that she is not good with a palette knife. Carol, the palette knife is something that is really a practice. Makes it's a practice perfect. thing. For and sure. It's a get a cardboard box and get your. Amazon sends you those boxes so that you can have painting projects yes. practice. Exactly. Yes. That's why they That's do it. Why. They told me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, even when we it's do. It's a public service. It is. It is. <laughs> When we do our pro like so you know if you order something off of our Amazon list then you're gonna get a box. And I mean that's why we send them there, right? <laughs> um, but you know we practice on on boxes on on the back Paper. of the piece of wood at, yeah. it, before we ever record a video with it because you know it's just one that you want to make sure when you're trying with a new stencil that it's going to work. So tell me what just happened. Um, I stuck the palette knife into the edge of my stencil and lifted it and we'll see. Okay, so this is thicker. It's also not so dark, but it is thicker. So we're gonna see how that did. Uh, that's so much better. And if I was doing a texture background, this would not make me sad because I would be doing sanding on top mm -hmm. of it. I would be doing like distressing and antiquing and all that kind of stuff. And I probably would keep this texture to my edges mm -hmm. and make it be something that was like, oh, you know what we need is a river rock stencil. Okay. I wonder if we have that. Um, I, I will do. write it down and we'll look. Yeah, a river rock around the edges of a like distressed wood mm -hmm. thing. Oh, that would be so cool. Um, okay. I have a quick question yep. about the modeling paste. Yep. Um, Brenda asked, how long does it take to dry? Would a heat gun dry the paste with no cracking? Um, I don't know about the cracking. I haven't, so if I use a paste or a texture or something or another like that, um, I tend to leave them and let them dry because you're gonna stand there a long time with any heating elements. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, see ya, I'll get back tomorrow. You know, so I'm that girl. I just like walk out and leave it. So you don't, if you wanna try it, I'd say try yeah, it let us and know. let us know. Yeah, I wanna know. You guys, if you have answers I don't have, Absolutely. Please let me know because I that's how I learn Absolutely. and that by messing things up and doing weird things. Okay, <laughs> what's next? Number nine. Ooh, two left, guys. Make sure you're like, sharing, and commenting because there's not much time. Not much time left. Okay. Um, number nine is the polyfoam brush. Ooh, okay, so we see this one all the time. Okay, and so... I'm gonna say, so number one, this needs to be a firm texture, okay? So this is not the floppy moppy that you have from like um, stores that are not expensive. Okay, I filter, filter, filter. How Good many times, job. you guys, if you know how many times I filtered myself today, um, you can drop that in the comment and I will have <laughs> Carrie give you a prize, okay? Because that's a, that's a lot of, that's a day right here, okay. So I see a lot of people, what they do is they whoop, glom up the thing and then they go right to their project. It's the same loading process for every single applicator. So I'm gonna get out some paint. I'm going to use a dry applicator. And what I don't like about this for um, stenciling is this beveled edge. What I love about it for base coating or doing a dry brush technique on the background is the beveled edge. So I just think this one loses because it's not the right shape. It doesn't have a graduated domed thing. So I'm gonna try to evenly put that on my brush. And then I'm going to offload over here. And then I'm going to, I could dab it if I wanted to. So I, mean, I guess I should have done that first. So I just shared on both Facebook and YouTube a link for you guys to watch after this mm -hmm. of what not to do with a ah. polyfoam brush. We did a five ways to fix stencil painting mistakes and there was one that made me want to cry when Patty used the polyfoam brush and she just glopped it on and oh it was a mess. It ended up we had to write, like take it all off and start fresh. So it shows you what not to do mm -hmm. compared to this of what to do if you're Yeah, and I think this. that's super important. So that's like, I, I have been doing videos for 
I think for maybe almost 20 years. And um, I have always left, like you could edit the mistakes out, but I think that you learn so much more from the mistakes. So I always try to leave the mistakes in, unless the whole thing is like a train wreck and then I just like start over yeah. and find some more research, figure out how to do it right and do that kind of thing. But um, generally speaking, if there's simple mistakes that you can fix, then I do definitely leave it all yeah. in. Um, I want to say we do have several people congratulating you on filtering today. So we really, <gasps> we really appreciate all of your support. And um, one of those people... You're so happy that I filtered. Trust me. Yes. One of those people was Betty Tolber on Facebook. <laughs> Betty, I'm going to give you this um, dot stencil. Um, we really appreciate your support. She sent like exclamation points and Yay! capital letters. So Betty will message you and get your address and get this sent out Betty, to you. you're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so then you can, let's see if we can do some more. So we're gonna offload and let's see if we can scumble with this or swirl. Um, how many of you are swirlers and how many of you mm -hmm. are daubers? I'm curious. We haven't asked that question in a long we time. We have not. And that's I, kind of a shame because it's a really amazing difference. Well, and Patty is a pretty much swirler all the time. I always... No time for daubing. I always, <laughs> no I always start swirling, but I like really bright, bold looks on my projects. You get it base coated better if you and, do the daubing. And I yeah. do the, the stippling... Um, on, I'll start with a swirl and then I'll go to stippling. You could just never for achieve this with a, 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 swirl. With a swirl. No. You're never going to get that bold color. Exactly. Ever. Okay, um, I'm going to put this in water because it is a foam brush and um, it will dry. And then I'm going to show you what we look like. We have a mix. We have a couple swirlers, a couple stipplers, some that do both. Yeah. So we have a nice well, I definitely mix on. speak both languages. Mm -hmm. um, I just prefer, it. My, my home language is swirl. Right, well, and that's what Denise just says too. Denise said, I swirl more now yeah. because she saw us swirl. Yeah. Um, but then we also have like Suzanne and Suz Suzanne and Susan <laughs> just at the same time, just said it just depends on what really project they're depend. doing. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Um, you got to be bilingual. Mm -hmm. You got to you got to be able to swirl and you got to be able to daub and um, you know. So okay, so this is the foam applicator. So when I applied the paint and I dried it off, I still got some fuzzy bleeding under. I don't like that. I actually don't mind it. I, I would control it more. It's not my favorite applicator, guys. Mm -hmm. um, this should not be used for applying paint through a stencil. I feel. I feel like this is like between the texture, but I like the texture if it was not in the middle of my project, um, but this is my least favorite. Well, speaking of texture, Brenda just said something completely amazing. Ooh. And Brenda, I'm gonna get, Brenda is on YouTube right now, Brenda Dunham, um, and Brenda, you're going to get a six Ooh, a by set, set um, six by six stencil set. It's got birds, it's got um, Yay, Brenda, uh, thank all you. kinds of different things. So I will get your address from you, but Brenda said, that if you use the foam brush for stenciling trees, that Ooh. would be super cool. So Ooh. if you know you have an open tree design, yeah. and then you use that, it would give it such that cool would be, texture. That's a you great could do idea. it green, and then texture snow on top of it. You could really use Brenda, that that's shape, awesome. that shape of that brush to mm -hmm. create a tree. Um, because yes. if you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend, and we're gonna just try it. And this is totally not doing it through a stencil. And Brenda, I know that's not what you said, but I just got inspired by your comment. So you could take this and create mm -hmm. like a little evergreen moment. And but it would basically be the same thing. Yeah. If, if you're not the kind of person, if you're, you know, I am not the kind of person to go through and do that freehanded. I would feel so much more comfortable if I had the outline of the stencil to Thank do the tree. Is. And look how great, Brenda. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. That is so awesome. Fun. So fun. Oh, I love it. That just inspired me. Sorry. Okay. What's our last one? Number 10. Wait, can anybody guess real quick? While you guys are oh. guessing, I'm going to tell you what is going to be the grand prize that we will announce tomorrow. Like sharing and commenting, and, guys. And so we're going to actually do two grand prizes, one for Facebook and one for YouTube. And we will do the same prize. So it is a large rose set that comes with small roses, medium roses, large roses, and it is a layered set so that you can yeah. do all your different layers of roses and it's amazing. 
So okay. we're gonna give one of these away on Facebook and on YouTube. And that's a good value, right? It is. Now. It's a fifty-nine ninety-nine. Yeah, you guys, that's a lot of things. Um, so this trend with the boho greenery mm -hmm. and the little soft roses and mm -hmm. all of that stuff is ridiculous right now. Like to have like a dreamy, like this is very bold because it, it just goes with the colors, but to do this in this really dreamy, you could even use, ah, you know, your your sprays and your textures and things like that. But yeah, this one is the That is with the model yeah. paste. And so you can see how crisp that is. But this is a big deal. And this is what I say when I say stencils or tools. To paint a rose ah, freehand, um, like I've had people cry in workshops and classes. I've hosted, I had a store long time ago where we taught like the painting and technique kind of things and I've had people like leave the room and cry because of roses. Yeah. Roses are a big darn deal and I filtered again. <laughs> Golly bum gee willikers. She's doing so good. I guys. am doing a good, I'm like um, a grown up today. We also had someone had just recently shared, if you guys have pictures to share, go to the community tab of our Facebook page and you can upload photos of your projects and we love to see those, but we've had some people sharing their projects and they would do just a plain welcome mm. and then paint roses around yeah. it. And you know, if you're not a freehander, you can still do this. So yeah. Amazing. And even if you're a trace and baser, um, roses are just still to make them look really pretty. So to have that organic leaf shape, which mm -hmm. is in this stencil set is amazing. So did we have any guesses that were accurate for what we were doing last? N no. Okay. We so we had, we had, we had a couple, well, I think everyone's just really excited about the giveaway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, I think we sidetracked all of them. Um, but number, number 10, the one we save the best that we for last. save the best for last is our don't oh, rush. Mila, me, Milia just guessed fingers. Oh, we didn't even think about you that. Know what? There's a bonus tip. Ready? Let's do this as number ten, and we'll do the other as number. Are you ready? Okay. So you can take your finger, you can apply the paint, and then you blot it off, and then you can go over here and just tap that stuff that is on cool. there. Amelia, good job. I am going to message you and I'm going to send you a prize. I don't know what it is yet, but I will send you a prize. So you can apply that in the same way as any other applicator. Um, your fingers should be dry as an applicator and then you should always offload your paint and then make sure you take it off on the paper towel. And then we did have one person. Um, I don't know, let's try. We've had Swilling. two people, um, so um, June yes. and Pat both guessed the paintbrush. Um, June guessed the stencil brush. So stencil job, brushes are, is our favorite, our number one. So I am swirling with my finger. Okay, ready? Ta-da! How cool. Wow! That's so great. That I never even thought of that. Thank you. That And someone, someone said it on Facebook, um, <laughs> on, on YouTube as well. Okay. So... Let's our do our favorite, and this is our dome stencil brush. Um, the guys, the dome stencil brush is called a dome stencil brush because it is domed. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is not the flat kind, and I don't know why they keep making them flat. Yeah. It kind of drives me nuts. Like if you know something is broken and you know it bleeds under, the most number one question on YouTube, on Google, mm -hmm. on everywhere that has anything to do with DIY and stenciling is how not to bleed under your stencil and flat stencil brushes bleed under yeah. okay i'm just i'm just saying it like out loud to the universe so they stop making those brushes silly okay so notice that what i'd like to give a brag out to is that i have used the stick and restick on the back of my stencil mm -hmm. it is a very teeny little graspy area that it is applied to paper is porous paper has fibers paper is bad for adhesives. If you take a piece of tape and you put it on your jean and you pull it off, it doesn't stick very well again, right? Same thing with this. Once you use it and use it, um, it won't stick as much. So I have used it on 10 or 12 pieces of paper since I applied it earlier, and it has stayed sticky enough for me to do all of the, the things I wanted to do. And what's really cool about this, so you guys are gonna love this, you can take this to the sink, you can wash your stencil, you can wash the back of the stencil and it will wash all those, don't use soap. Um, you can wash the back of it and all of those fibers will go away and when it dries, it's still sticky. Mm -hmm. 
And so I love that because you stick it once and stick and restick. It just yep. is still sticky until you use your rubbing alcohol and you take it away. So um, that is magic, magic, magic. Okay. So same way we've used all the other applicators. This is number 11 because 11. the finger got thrown in. Yep. So we're going to pick up our dry paint with our dry brush and we're going to offload. And then I learned this last week. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of this, and then you walk all over the place, um, you do this and you can keep putting your brush right next to that and just gently ease over way less wasting of paper towels and stuff like that. And then you can kind of come over here and pick it up off of the paper towel and reuse the brush that way. Okay. So we're going to go over here. I've got a very wiped off brush, so I think I'm going to swirl first. Okay, so my pressure is feather. You know when you just stroke a little baby's soft little head and they've got all that little fine hair? That's the pressure you wanna use, like super soft pressure. You're not giving a back rub, you know, you're not doing that kind of thing. You're just being like, oh, so soft. And that's my pressure and I just swirl it while I'm doing that, okay? And then stencils is a layers game, so you're gonna layer that up and then if I wanna stipple, I apply the paint, I wipe, whoops, I forgot to go over. I'm gonna to have to retrain. My filter's gonna be <laughs> working over time. So I'm gonna wipe over here, and then I'm gonna come over here and pounce, okay? If I didn't wipe anything off, then it would be bleeding under. And because it's dome-shaped, it doesn't shove underneath the stencil, okay? And what I don't like about stencil, with doing the daubing like that, is my forearm starts hurting after not very long and then it makes my arm jiggle. <laughs> so, <laughs> female pride time, right? So yeah, I don't appreciate that. I don't need anybody showing me jiggly Jiggle arms. arms. Um, so I have a couple questions about the dome brush. While I automatically went this. back to swirling. Now you're back to yeah, swirling. I was like, oh, no, no. Um, um, how do you keep the dome brush domed? Okay, the way you keep the dome brush domed. How many domes does a dome brush dome? If a dome brush... Dome, dome, dome yeah, brushes. Dome, 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 dome. <laughs> okay, we are going to peel this off first so I can show you the result. Okay, and so that is the result of that. And I think if we're comparing it, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to throw this in water. Number one, keep your dome brush clean and that will keep your dome brush good. So you don't want this sitting out here drying because oxidation makes paint dry. So the air dries the paint. That is how paint works. So that goes into the water and I'll bring out a different dome brush so that I can show you that. But let's compare this really quick. This was the roller. I feel like the roller is very similar to um, stippling. And then this one, I didn't write it down. It looks oh, that's the, the foam brush. Okay. The um, black foam. A lot of people agree with you. Um, Carol called it her bat wing. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I love the dauber as an applicator, mm -hmm. like a lot. Yeah. I'm, mm, so mm. we use the dauber a lot and we use it on- I just don't usually- We I don't, don't do- I don't do- Not I with do, stencil. Yeah. We use it a lot when Gosh. when we're doing um, embellishments and cut out words because it gives us- um, What do you guys like better? Mess, yeah. What, wanna, what, do you, what do you like better? What do you prefer? What are you going to try? Yeah. after watching us do it. I am, I'm kind of in love over here. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys, this is not planned. No. So this is paper towel, this is dauber, this is, I'm gonna write the dome brush. Now the dome brush is great. Um, I'm not saying the dome brush isn't, but I'm saying like, if I had me a dauber, okay. I, I wouldn't be afraid. Amelia asked, what, yeah. are your, what are your three favorites of what we've done today? Um, so. I am all about the roller, the dauber, and the dome, dome brush. brush. And then I've got to answer the question about how you keep your dome brush. Yes, dome. Um, and well, and I'm going to read a couple of yeah. these. Um, and Kelly, I'm going to drink Kelly my, said, my hot tea. <laughs> Kelly is on um, par with you. She said dome brush, dauber, ink sweeper, sponge roller. Yeah. Um, Carol said the dome brush and the dauber. Mm -hmm. Jarita said dome brushes for her. So everyone's kind of yeah. in a similar. Yeah, and I think if I was to have a, for whatever reason, the daubers, um, actually, I'm you know, sitting there like on the fly thinking, they have this 
fabulous little cavity that you can put your hand into, your fingers into. It's super comfortable to use. Um, and like, I really love that. And the, this one has two, so I can fit two of my fingers in there. Um, they last a really good long time. Like, I think they're a really good solution. And like, I'm looking at the results and I am, I am not sad with that. And I will definitely pay attention. Um, I think your dome brushes are gonna let, oh, I already had a brush. I think your dome brushes are gonna last a little longer um, than the dauber, but I feel like if you do take care of your dauber, it'll be fine. Agreed. You know, so, and those are cheaper, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? So, like, it's a neat, neat kind of mm -hmm. moment. Okay, um, we use a ginger grater to um, clean our brushes um, when we're, we take them to the, we take the bucket to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. You do not use a ginger grater on your dauber. You don't want to put these scaly things no, no. and rub that. With the dauber, you're going to push. Is the dauber in the brush cleaning video? Do you know? I will check. Yeah, I don't remember if we did the daubers or not. Um, but um, they might be in the original yeah, brush I'll cleaning check. video. We have two. Um, we have two. You guys, um, we have got some new, um, on YouTube, new playlists. We are gathering the content so that if you want to know about brush care and cleaning things, that's in one playlist. If you want to know about special background techniques, mm -hmm. that's in another playlist. Um, if you want to know about um, bleeding under, blah, 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 we've got all the playlists in the world and we're working on more for you. Um, just to organize the content so if you're needing specific things, you can find it. So with the dauber, here's my running water coming out of the sink and I would push that under the running water until it ran clean. And that's how I clean that. It's it's just a press, a press, whoosh kind of thing. Yeah, it's so it's going to be similar, and I'll share the brush cleaning video. It's going to be similar to how we clean the polyfoam brush, where yeah. you squeeze yeah, it. Yeah, you just squish, 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 and the and also the um, the roller is the same way. Um, the roller, you just squish, squish, squish underneath the water until it runs clean. Um, I will tell you, Rusty, can you is that gray roller still sitting over there on that credenza? Yeah, this is this is important to know. Um, I walked by this the other day, and I don't even know what project it came from. Um, I really don't like to clean rollers. <laughs> I, don't, I just, I don't know why. It feels, I don't know, wasteful or something, because so much paint gets loaded up in them, you know? So, but this has got a little bit of a dry crust, but this has literally been over there, I'd say, like a month. Maybe two. Maybe two. Uh. Gosh. So I, I don't know what this even came from, but it's still, you know what? Hot second. Here we go. Where's my handles? All right. We're going to see what happens here. So this has been out for a long time, but in the bag. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to put that on. We handle. love science experiments, guys. Love it. This is how we do what we do all the time is we just have fun with it and see. You know, so we're just gonna see. So I'm not gonna reload this with anything. Put my stencil down and ha ha! Um, isn't that wild? It's been there for like at least one month, maybe yeah. two. Thank you, plastic baggie. Yeah, those little um, fold top, don't use a zip lock. Mm -hmm. Get the fold top ones from like when we were in kids in school. Yeah. Um, where your sandwich goes in it. Yeah, because um, if, you get, if you get the ones that zip or the, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have an opening. Yeah, it, it leaves a little, ragged edge mm -hmm. and it doesn't completely seal and you always end up with something dry okay so i think winter winter chicken dinner and there you go so that That's is awesome. a month old thing that did the job and then i could put it back in a bag i can also take it like so i still haven't answered the darn question about the dome brush <laughs> i'm gonna get there we'll i get swear there. We'll get i'm gonna there. drop this in water so i have to wash yes. it yes because now there's no more excuses i'm gonna Dive that down and just tuck it in water. If you have water on the things that you need to wash, then the paint stays wet. It's when the air mm -hmm. dries the water, oxidizes it, then it's dry and yeah. then it's a problem. Okay, let's talk. Did I, I just showed the thing, but I didn't show like, I showed what not to do. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to, if you're washing this, you're under the water, here's the stream of water. Okay, and that brush video shows this completely. If you do um, at boardroom in a town, we have a boutique and a, a paint party workshop place. Um, if you do what the teachers sometimes do, they go straight across the tip of the brush and that is gonna flatten your dome out 
and that is going to make it not as domey and wonderful mm -hmm. as it should be. So what I do when I wash the brushes, I'm under the running water, I tilt it around and I clean it around the dome and I don't just go straight across. So you want to just be careful to encourage the shape of the dome. You know, if you want your children to stand up straight, you're going to be like, hey, stand up straight. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to be like slouchy person. So we want to do that with this. We want to encourage the shape that we want it to be in when we're cleaning it. And then that when well, you're it. always and it's going to you're going to kind of pull it. You're not going to push it. You're yeah. not going to push it mm -hmm. into the grater. You're going to pull it along, yeah. turn so, it. Yeah, as you, you go. kind of. Yes, exactly. That's a really good point, mm -hmm. Carrie. Um, so you just kind of pull it this way. You could do it the other well, you way could, too. Yes, you yeah. can push it. But, but you, if you you're to, doing this, I think yeah. that's the thing to yeah. avoid. You can push it, but when you're pushing it, you want to turn it towards you to push yes. so and not push handle it. pointed. Yeah. yeah, this way. So and then rotate it around. Mm -hmm. So you know if you if you really don't want your dome brush to not be domed anymore, then you want to encourage the shape of your dome brush. Yeah. If you really don't care and you're just like, I just need to get this thing clean and then I'll move through it and whatever, then don't care. Well, and it's also, it's yeah. also a pressure thing. It is um, completely There a are some thing. of our old dome brushes when we used flat. to only yeah. stipple and we used to only stipple, we used to only do mm -hmm. hard pressure that they did flatten out because yeah. we were you, you're pounding. Pounding, point, point, point like that. And so when you're, when you're um, doing your swirling, I think really the swirling might encourage the dome shape as well because you're really going around the edge of the dome. You're mm -hmm. not doing, I'm not just on my very tip and swirling. I'm kind of doing a bigger around. movement. Yeah. yeah. So that probably encourages that, but they're natural fibers. So they will, they will kind of break off mm -hmm. a little bit, but they, it's really not a problem. We've been doing, we've been selling these brushes for maybe six or seven years. I think something like that. Um, they're fairly new to the um, stenciling community, yeah. and um, I've replaced, because we stand behind our products and do all that kind of stuff, but I think I've replaced 20 brushes yeah. out of um, something like, I don't know, probably like 20,000. Yeah, we, and we've so we, much. We sell thousands you guys, a year. Yeah, we sell so many brushes. So um, there's not very many that we've ever replaced. If you do ever have a problem, now I can't stop it from flattening if you're being mm -hmm. aggressive and you know that kind of thing. But um, they don't fall apart and they don't they don't like disintegrate. Well, and know? so we had a question that I'm going to ask, but it's also going to kind of relate to that. Susan asked, "How long can you soak brushes? The longer <laughs> the longer you soak your brush, the more wet it's going to get in the ferrule." And oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you can have some softening that goes. Um, mm -hmm. It hasn't really been a problem, but this is the ferrule. And if you soak your brush for a really long time, then the, the water gets up in there and, and it can soften the glue. Um, I haven't really had that problem. We had another line of brushes that the whole head would fall out. Yeah. So whatever glue they're using is way more aggressive glue than was before. And so we haven't had that problem with these brushes. But um, I can tell you, I, I don't know how many times I've come back to my paint table, this studio table. Um, we go to lunch right after we're done with the lives <laughs> and stuff like that. And then, oh, I might get distracted and go do some things that I need to do and then forget that I left the brushes in the bin. I have left them in the bin for a month. Oh yeah. Um, so yesterday, Easily. yesterday Easily. I cleaned brushes um, that we found in here last Tuesday that I had used the week before. Mm, yeah. And I, they just crossed. So it was, it was almost. Yeah, two weeks. we leave them in the water like forever. Mm -hmm. Like really, it, and and you just that just means you have to dry them longer. Yeah. You know, so it's really not a problem. But is it a best case scenario? No, not really. No, but we also have brushes here. So <laughs> we also don't do <laughs> take care of things as good as we should. Probably. Mm, yeah. So we're gonna tell on ourselves. Um, I do want to say. Where's your filter? I'm sorry. <laughs> You've done all the filtering. Um, hey, mm. I'm being open and honest with our people. My and, filter um, is broken. I've used it too much. <laughs> um, Brenda has Brenda said that she ruined a couple hundred dollars worth of your favorite brushes because she was using the ginger grater incorrectly. She said uh, she was being an ox with it, and that was her word. Yeah. And that she was just um, pushing too hard. Yeah, yeah. But she realized once she eased up, she's not had any problems yeah. with the brush keeping it. Yeah, shape. and you can use you can use the palm of your hand. So if you here's your running water, 
here's the palm of my hand, I can just do exactly with my hand what I'm doing with the ginger grater. I just paint with so many brushes and do so much painting that I, it makes my hand sore. Mm -hmm. Like I'm wearing off the skin, you know? So I use, I prefer the ginger grater. Also the ginger grater, a um, little plug for our brush cleaner. Um, I'll see it over here. Hi. Oh, there we go. So the bl brush cleaner and restorer, what I love about this ginger grater with the well is obviously I'm not gonna put this on my hand, although it is non-toxic, it is all the good things about a strong cleaner, but you can put this into this well and it will take your hardened dried paint out of your brushes and you don't have to scrub. It will just soak and saturate it and take it away. So I can saturate and the minute you do it, it'll start just eating the paint out of mm -hmm. your brush and it doesn't damage your brush. Um, it will eat the varnish off of your grand piano if you spill it. So don't do that. That's really important. Well, and also it eats some paint is plastic. So it eats some plastics. It doesn't eat like this plastic. I don't know what the differences are and stuff, but um, it will eat a meat tray. And uh, the reason I know about the grand piano is because a customer put this cleaner in a meat tray with her brushes and then set it on her grand piano and it ate through the meat tray and ate the varnish off of the grand yeah, piano. Oh, it is like the most tragic yes. thing. Yes, um, and I'm gonna post a link um, to our us showing how to use that yeah. to restore It's a really great brushes. cleaner. Um, if you've done tragic things, like you know, I've gone on vacation, um, you know, so if you own a business and you want to go on vacation, you have to hurry and get a whole bunch of things done before you leave. Mm -hmm. And so I might hurry and get a painting project finished or a video done, mm -hmm. and then I might forget that the brush basin is sitting there with the things, or I might lay my brushes off to the side, and I have left brushes for, you know, weeks, you know, going cross country and doing things, our family scattered to the winds, so, you know, our trips are long when we do go, and I've come back to like these, like, hardened brushes and you can put this cleaner in here and that will clean that brush right out. So this will save your bacon and for, you know, pennies each use that you need it. So it's a really, really good product. Yeah. Okay, are we all done? I we did 10, you guys. No, we did 11. We did 11. Because my finger. Because of your finger. Yes, yeah, so we did 11. Um, we don't forget to comment, like, share, all the yeah. good things. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will announce winners for our grand prize. We'll announce one on Facebook and we will announce one on YouTube. You so want to win the prizes. Yes. They're so good. Yeah. And then stay tuned Saturday for our bunny crossing video. I think you guys are really going to love this so one. Cute. The tea towel stripes. Like it's just, it's great. Yeah. We show so. you how to use all the things. You guys have a great week and yep. we will see you, see you on next week. Tuesday.